In this section of the video, we've removed all of the guards to outline all the components and parts on this machine. If you come over to the left side of the machine, you're going to see two main air cylinders. This cylinder raises the tension carriage to tension the sidewall, while this cylinder pushes the cutting blade out to meet the bead. When we go down here to the base of the machine, you're going to notice a regulator and oiler along with a filter. This oiling port should have oil in it at all times. It helps lubricate the air system. The dial should always read 110 to 120, 120 being the max. As we come over to the front of the machine, we can see the two tension rollers that the sidewall sits on. We've got the drive wheel that rotates the sidewall, the cutting blade holder that holds the cutting blade, and the diffusers. These diffusers have four usable edges on them. They are symmetrical pieces that can be removed and rotated to use the good edges. The edges can also be sharpened multiple times before you need to actually rotate these diffusers. As we continue over to the right side of the machine, we have the relay, the air solenoids, 5 horsepower motor, and the gearbox. The gearbox has a viewing port displaying the level of oil inside the gearbox. There should always be at least half of the viewing port full of oil. To fill the gearbox, remove this set screw and use 80 weight oil, gear oil. The last item is the blade actuator cylinder, which actuates the entire blade and diffuser system to the sidewall to facilitate removing the bead. Operating this machine is extremely simple. Green is the start cycle button. Once the bead has been removed, press the red button to stop. The roller gantry will allow you to extract the sidewall and bead. The emergency stop button will not only cut power but also release air pressure for the entire machine so that you can move components manually. In this section of the video, we're going to display how to remove the diffusers so that you can flip them and use the other edges or sharpen the current edges. To do so, we need to release the pressure on the machine so that we can lift the tension carriage up and actuate manually the blade arm out so that we can access the nuts that are behind here. Simply press the emergency stop. Allow the pressure to fully release. Lift up the tension carriage. Once there's enough space, push the blade actuator forward. Allow the carriage to come down. And now, from this angle, we can get a wrench up behind here and undo each of these nuts, which will allow us to remove the diffusers. I'm going to illustrate how to correctly position the cutting blade into the blade holder. The first thing we need to do is release all the pressure on the machine so that we can pull the blade holder out to access the set screws. To do that, we're going to push the emergency stop button located here. That will release all the pressure in the system so that I can pull the blade holder out. 
the blade holder is out, I can now access the, the set screws that tighten the blade inside of its slot. Simply insert the blade with the cutting edge facing up. We're going to insert the blade so that it sticks out 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. right about there. I'm going to use an Allen wrench to tighten the set screws. Once both set screws are tight, it is now ready and in position. I'm going to show you how to pro the proper technique for getting the machine up onto the mobility wheels. The handles here and the foot rest here allow you to tip the machine back, getting the machine up onto the mobility wheels. You take a little bit of thrust to get the machine up onto these wheels. When you receive the, your machine, you will notice that there will be a cord approximately five feet long with three wires, black, green, and white. You will have to check with your electrical supply and the quick start guide to match up the phase and voltage for the machine setup. Here in the US we use 220 volts, single phase, this style plug. The air supply is very easy. You will need a female fitting on your hose and the correct male fitting to go onto the machine. We supply the machine with a standard male fitting. You may have to change yours to fit your female end at your shop.